Hi, my name is Karen Paul. I'm a learning and teaching librarian at King's College London. And I'm going to be talking to you today um, about how we introduced a flipped classroom approach uh, to teaching advanced search techniques, uh, particularly for systematic reviewers, um, with the aim of encouraging active learning. So the aim for today is for us to explore um, how a flipped classroom can encourage in-class active learning. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we introduced our flipped classroom um, at King's and how we're using it in our library teaching. But I'd also like to take the opportunity in the session that we have after this uh, to identify some of those active learning techniques, um, how they can be used to support information literacy teaching beyond databases and, and systematic reviews, um, and perhaps for you to identify um, your next steps with regard to considering flipped classroom or the use of active learning within your own setting. So here at King's, we have a large number of health students in our health faculties who are undertaking systematic reviews, um, right through from undergraduate, postgraduate taught, uh, PhD students and staff. So we had found that the demand for support has been continuously high and um, we'd been running various workshops, um, about three hours, um, but we were really finding in those that we were asking quite a lot of the learners. For many of them, we were introducing them to concepts like subject headings or breaking down their research question um, in some way that they'd never done it before. And we were then um, aiming to cover not only that, but also introduce them to um, techniques like using filters and needing to search in grey literature. And it was just too much content for, for one session. So what we did um, was to uh, separate out uh, some of this basic introductory material um, and decide that this would be taught through some existing uh, e-learning that we had. And then we were able to use the class time to really focus on uh, the learners being able to put that into practice in a supported environment uh, to make it very interactive um, and with lots of uh, teacher time uh, to actually um, be able to, to interact and, and give feedback during the session uh, itself. So in the workshops itself, we were aiming to increase the amount of active learning that was taking place, very much putting the learner in a position where they were thinking about and applying what they were learning to a real world, meaningful uh, context. So for us and for our learners, it meant that they would come with their systematic review question and that they would actually progress that through the course of the workshop. Uh, it should encourage motivation to learn um, and also learner engagement. We also uh, wanted to encourage metacognition, where the students were actively thinking about their own learning and um, linking um, the activity um, to what they then needed to go on and do in the future, with the aim that when they completed the session um, and uh, were a couple of weeks on, that it would be easier for them to recall the learning that they had, had done. So this is a screenshot of part of the e-learning that they were asked to complete ahead of coming along to the workshop. It starts with a diagnostic quiz to help them identify the particular bits of e-learning that they need to do, guides them through that, um, and then at the end there's a final quiz. So this is an example of one of the quiz questions. The final quiz could be taken as many times as the learners needed. And uh, the kinds of questions that were in there um, included, for example, this kind of drag and drop question um, where we're asking uh, the learner to put into practice an understanding of using the PICO framework. So one of the first activities that we introduced in the workshop was to ask learners to complete this Padlet reflecting on their e-learning, asking them, what did you learn and what do you need to know more about? Now, in the previous versions of the workshops, um, we as librarians had very much noticed that there were some sort of troublesome, challenging areas uh, that learners were often finding difficulties with. And it was interesting to see that these were very much the things that were being um, uh, surfaced via using this Padlet as well. Learners were saying that they had learned um, perhaps about subject headings or how to use a framework or great literature for the first time. Um, and they were also these things that were then coming through 
um, in what you need to know more about. And so in the session itself, we were aiming to focus on these challenging threshold concepts um, to very much um, uh, help the, the learners to grasp those, to get a deeper understanding of the subject, because without that, they weren't able to, to progress. So in the workshop, we were aiming for the learners to work through a, a learning cycle where they had a chance to reflect on the learning that, that they had done, um, to um, put that into practice and get feedback and then have a chance to ask any questions. The aim was that we used the majority of the, the lesson time to actually scaffold the learning, to move the learners sort of towards the deeper understanding of the, the key troublesome concepts that, that we've already identified. And um, we ran it as a flipped classroom for the first time in July 2019. And it ran 17 times, um, approximately every two weeks until March 2020, when we had to pause all face to face teaching. Um, 123 learners attended the new version of the session, ranging from uh, MSc, PhD and staff, um, as well as a couple of undergraduate uh, students. And each session was co-delivered by two uh, teaching librarians. We introduced various activities in the workshop to encourage active learning. For example, in one of them, we were asking the learners to assess the quality of a search strategy. We gave them the PRESS framework, peer review of electronic search strategies, as a guide to the kinds of things that they, they should be looking for in a high quality search. And we got them to apply that in their groups uh, to a search strategy, which we'd adapted to introduce errors into. The next step was that having had some time to actually work on their own search strategies and develop those, uh, we asked the learners again to work in their pairs or their small groups um, to assess each other's uh, search strategies using the PRESS framework. So we collected feedback and impact through three main ways. Um, the Padlet at the start of the session after they'd completed the e-learning, a critical incident questionnaire at the end of the workshop and um, we use our CIQs um, after all of our training sessions um, and then we also sent out uh, an impact survey and were able to have a couple of uh, follow-up interviews uh, before lockdown uh, ended, ended that process. So the Padlet and the critical incident questionnaire start by asking the learner to reflect on what they have learned so there's a little bit of metacognition being encouraged at that point um, and then we ask um, in the CIQ about when they were most engaged or least engaged. Um, and um, there were some real positives from that. Um, they, um, the learners identified that they were more confident in advanced search techniques, um, specifically using subject headings. Um, they very much appreciated um, the uh, time where they could apply their own knowledge um, and uh, that they were able to get immediate uh, feedback from peers and uh, the librarians who were teaching the sessions. The impact survey, um, we uh, got 30 responses um, and um, uh, that most of those would recommend uh, the session, but we did have one um, where there were some negatives raised. And this was interesting for us because nothing had come up in the CIQs. So actually um, by sending out the impact survey, we did get a different voice coming through. Um, so um, that was something that I'd really recommend actually, that if you can find different ways to kind of triangulate your results, um, you may surface different viewpoints um, coming through. They also identified that um, in the impact survey that there'd been uh, very much an immediate impact on their work um, and um, some of them also identified that uh, they were able to um, see a long term impact on, say, for example, publication. Um, so that was that was really interesting as well. The follow up interviews with the three um, learners that were um, able to be completed um, did also raise a really big issue for us, which was that one person in particular reported a real barrier to actually attending the workshop um, in the form of the e-learning. So this is something that we have uh, taken forward and we're looking at different ways um, that people can access our workshop if they aren't able to, uh, to use the, the e-learning. 
In general, we also, um, uh, in response to things that were coming up in the CIQs, um, as we were going along, we did um, uh, sort of alter the session slightly. So, for example, um, it was flagged up that uh, learners still wanted to know more about running a search on a different database. So we showed them that in the session as, as we developed it um, after um, we'd got that response uh, a, a couple of times. So we found some real advantages to running the uh, session uh, using the, the flipped classroom approach. It did mean that we could assume a certain level of knowledge uh, that they should all have uh, completed the e-learning, interacted with it. Um, it should allow us to be a bit more flexible and adaptive in the session uh, to really meet those learners needs. And um, the in-class assessment that we were able to do um, just by uh, looking at how learners were responding to the questions that were being asked and the activities that they were doing, um, that did show that there was uh, an increased base level um, of understanding of, of the advanced search techniques. So it was very rare that we were having to uh, start from scratch and uh, explain what the difference was between a, a keyword search and, and subject heading searching. It also allowed uh, more time for those le active learning activities um, and more time for both peer to peer and teacher feedback, which was one of the big aims that we'd set out with. So what were the challenges? Well, the main one was still timing. Even though we'd flipped a large amount of basic content into the e-learning, there was still a lot to cover. And uh, particularly where we were trying to take account um, of what uh, the learners had said in a particular session that they wanted to cover in the Padlet at the beginning, um, that itself brought challenges um, where even though we had some experienced librarians teaching the sessions, trying to work out what was needed to be focused on um, when actually you still had quite a range of learners in the in the room. Um, some of them would have already developed a bit of their search strategy. Some would only have done the e-learning and never really put it into practice. So differentiating uh, for their needs proved a little tricky. The final challenge was for the learner the e-learning did put up some access barriers to actually being able to uh, attend the workshop. Because we made them pass the quiz before they could book, um, we did have learners in, um, who were reporting that, that this, was a, this was a real struggle. So this is something that we need to, uh, to develop an alternative route for, really. So what are our next steps? Well, the course was paused during lockdown but we have restarted it now as a flipped classroom um, with e-learning ahead of a two hour webinar. That started back in January 21. We have our sign up sessions running as well as having offered it to a couple of cohorts as well. What we did do in 2020 was to fast track a five week asynchronous online course that we were already in the process of, of developing. Um, this uses many of the same active learning techniques. Um, it's asynchronous, so it doesn't have the flipped uh, classroom element, um, but we did try and transfer some of the um, activities uh, across to uh, the e-learning online course environment. Um, and we are also currently considering that alternative route to uh, the e-learning in order to be able to access the workshop because we knew that that had been a, a barrier for, for some. So this is the first of two quotes that I'd like to share with you that came out from the impact interviews. Um, and this one addresses uh, the use of the flipped classroom. So for this particular learner, they really highlighted the fact that by having the e-learning ahead of time and then the workshop itself, they were able to uh, cover more content and that um, having that base level of knowledge that then enabled them to use the time in the workshop to ask questions at a, a higher level. So this second quote is from another one of our impact interviews. And for this learner, they were considering uh, the fact that in the session itself, the ability to actually put the learning into practice um, really helped them because it made them understand whether or not they truly had grasped uh, that particular aspect of the learning. And they were then able to ask questions uh, if they hadn't. So that's my presentation finished. Uh, if you would like to contact me after today's event, um, then my details are on the slide here. And I'm looking forward to the discussions that follow. Thank you.